Welcome to Moriel TV. My name is Joshua, live with James Jacob Prash for a uh, question and answer uh, session. Jacob, uh, somebody writes in with the question of how Jesus was able to pay for our sins, our eternal sins. If the payment for our sins is eternity in hell, how was Jesus able to take an eternity's worth of punish? punishment in a finite time on the cross? That is a very good and a very logical question. Let me preface the answer by, first of all, pointing out a serious caveat. The King James Bible, unfortunately, has mistranslated the term Hades, the Greek equivalent of Sheol, the never, netherworld, as hell. Thus, the word faith money preachers, going back to the false teachings of E.W. Kenyon, some of the Brownamites, certainly Kenneth Hagin, and in more modern times, Kenneth Copeland and Joyce Meyer in the first edition of her first book, constructed this heretical view that when Jesus said it is finished on the cross, it was not, that he had to go to hell and be tortured by Satan three days and three nights in hell and be born again in hell. Jesus needed to be born again, have a second birth experience in hell after being tortured by Satan. It was not finished. This is completely heretical. It is a different gospel. It is totally apostate, and it is foundational to understanding why people like Kenneth Hagen and Kenneth Copeland and Joyce Meyer were such promulgators of a very serious error. They have a different gospel. But let's go beyond that now. Let's answer the specific question. It has to do with weights and values. If the wages of sin is death, and that death being the second death, eternal separation from God in eternal torment, in the place prepared for Satan and his angels, how could Jesus have atoned and paid the price, obtained propitiation for our sin, on the cross without going to hell in our place. How could that have taken place? Again, it's a matter of weight and value. As we always point out, to God, one man without sin is worth more than all the men with sin. One without is worth more than all with. The problem, of course, being all have sinned, all fall short of the glory of God. Therefore, God himself had to become a man, sending his son, the Logos, to become incarnated, to be the substitutionary atonement for our sins, to pay the penalty for what we did and to make atonement. This is the Lord Jesus, of course. His blood is so precious because of his righteousness. The life is in the blood. One drop of his blood is worth more than all of the blood in human history and all of the blood banks of all the people who've ever lived. One drop of his sinless blood is worth more than the rest. It carries more weight and more value. His life carries more weight and more value than the life of everyone else who's ever lived from Adam onward because of his sinlessness. God cannot look upon sin. God is and demands total perfection. And that is to be found in Jesus Christ alone. Thus, because of his perfection, his sinlessness, he was able to do certain things we can't. One is to impute his righteousness. Having taken our sin, he is able to give us his righteousness. Because God cannot look upon us because of our sin, he has to look upon the righteousness of Jesus in and through us. So righteous is Christ that he's able to impute it. Secondly, he could achieve something in those hours of crucifixion and in the events preceding it from his arrest up until the time of his death on the cross in our place that would be impossible for anyone else to do. He could pay the total price for the human race on that cross in its totality simply because of the higher value of his righteous blood and the 
greater weight his righteousness carries. None born among women was greater than John, but he was least in the kingdom. That is the one who was born again and has the imputed righteousness of Jesus is greater than the righteousness that John could have obtained by the law. It is a matter of weight and value. His righteousness was of such value that it outweighed everyone else. And his blood was so pure and perfect because of sin sinlessness. He did not have to go to hell. He could achieve something with relatively little time that all eternity could not achieve otherwise. The answer to the question, and it's a good question, is because of the value and the purity of his sinlessness and his blood. Thank you so much for your question. My name is James Jacob Prash. God bless.